Hey there, it's Shannon Mathchick Myers coming at you live from San Diego, California. In this section 3.2, we will be going into more about hypothesis tests. So this actually comes right after the video 2.6, I think it was, but I actually renamed it to section 3.1. <laughs> so not to confuse you, um, but here we go. The first thing we need to get straight is how a hypothesis test works, right? So there's two types of tests that we're going to study, one-tailed tests and two-tailed tests. So one-tailed tests contain one value which separates the domain axis into two intervals. So when you have a test like this, you're using either a critical value or p-value test. So that's the value that separates the intervals will either be a critical value or a p-value. So a one-tail test is used when you believe that the population parameter should really be more or less than what it is, as stated. And how would you know this? Well, you would know this based on information that you gain from your simple random sample. The next section will have an example about how to test a claim about a proportion. What we're covering here, these types of tests and all this other information can apply to a test about a population mean or a claim about a population mean. Um, you could test a claim about a population standard deviation. So whatever you need to use, this will be a good foundation for you. So the way that this test will look is when you have a one-tailed is you'll have some boundary, some boundary. I'm just going to put it you know, here, and like I said, it would be some maybe p-value, it would either be a p-value, which is used often nowadays, it's a p-value, or it would be a critical value. So this would be a one-tailed test where you were, t you were, your, um, alternative hypothesis was a greater than statement, right? So or you would be over here and this would be a less than statement in your null and alternative hypotheses. Nope in your alternative hypothesis. In your alternative hypothesis. And HA stands for alternative hypothesis. Okay? Now a two-tailed test, if you think the population parameter is different, that's often the wording, different. Or not equal or something along those lines. This is considered a two-tailed test and two values, critical or P, separate the domain axis into three intervals, all right? And just so you understand what the domain axis is, your domain axis is this, right? And remember that's about Z. In this case, it could actually be about the T distribution as well. So I think I will erase the Z and this is, and just say domain axis. What we're going to typically deal with is Z or T.
And then again, you've got your domain access here. And um, when you have a two-tailed test, let's see what happens. You would have, you know, something along this line. And you can see how that separates your domain axis into three intervals, right? And actually, you can extend the line out further. And maybe you can see it more clearly. Or you could if it was straight. <laughs> okay, something like that. And same with this one. <laughs> And so here you had one and then two intervals. This one would go, you know, forever like that, or it would go over on this side. Okay. And this one is going to have your three intervals. One, two, three. Cool, cool. All right, so now there are three methods that we'll be covering to test a hypothesis or claim in this manner. So you could use the critical value method. This method creates two to three intervals on the domain axis. One interval contains likely values and the other one to two intervals contain unlikely values, all right? So if you have a one-tailed test, and we'll pick colors here. So for a critical value, why don't we go ahead and use this orange. So if you have a greater than statement, right, for your alternative, then this critical value here, right, is gonna be Z alpha, right? Z alpha, and Right here, this right here would be called your rejection region. And so what happens is if your test statistic, right, falls into this rejection region, then you would reject the null hypothesis. Cool, so far in this case, you have a less than statement. Your test statistic should be negative. So you'd be looking at negative Z alpha, right? And so your rejection region would be something like this. And in here, you know, remember that these rejection regions mean that Sorry, <laughs> the rejection region means that um, your test statistic falls in this area. So under the null, it would be unlikely at a certain level, a test level, that this would happen under your null. And if when in a two-ended test, so if you're saying it's different than or something like that, what you're gonna have to do, and it's kind of similar to your confidence interval, right? What you would have to do is you would have to have like your negative Z alpha over two, and then you'd have your positive Z alpha over two. And so you'd end up with two rejection regions. And so um, if your test statistic fell into either region, you would reject the null hypothesis. Cool, cool? All right, so um, the next type of test 
is using the p-value method. This is a method used quite often nowadays because of the technology we have. So a p-value represents the probability of getting another value at least as extreme if you ran another random sample. as your test statistic. So in this case, your test statistic is going to be um, your barrier value, your separating value, but it does get a little bit tricky um, in a two-tailed test. You just have to be a little bit careful. So for a one-sided test, um, let's do the greater than first, and let's do these in, I don't know, this purple maybe. So here, if you have a one-tailed test on the right, and let's say your test statistic lands right here, okay? And this is landing, you know, it's a value that's on your domain axis. Sorry, it's kind of, okay? And so your test statistic is another Z value, right? And so here, this is your test statistic. And then what you're going to do is you're going to compare this to your alpha level. And if, if your probability that you get is less than, so if this probability, right, this shaded region on the right, this little teeny probability, so if this probability right the probability that in this case it would be z is greater than the z value you got for your test stat right this one equals your p value cool okay so on the less than again you're going to, you'll get something maybe over here. And again, this is our test statistic, right? So again, this little probability here would be the probability that you get something at least as extreme. So here you have your test statistic. And then this probability in here is the probability that Z is less than your test statistic. Okay? And then again, these are for one-tailed. Now here we're looking at two-tailed t-test, right? So you got, if you get a positive test statistic, so you get a positive test stat, then what you do is you, your p-value ends up being two times the probability that Z is greater than your test stat. If you get a, this one in pink, let's say you got a negative test statistic. then your probability for this one, or your p-value, I'm sorry, for this one, would be t 
2 times the probability that z is less than the test stat. Okay, and that is that, okay? So remember the probabilities are the region, the p-values would be adjusted by doubling. Groovy? You can also construct a confidence interval estimate, all right? But you have to be careful because remember when we were constructing confidence interval estimates for a proportion, then what were we using? We were using all of the sample statistics, all right? So you do it the same way and remember that confidence intervals contain likely values for the population proportion. So does the population proportion that is assumed true under the null hypothesis show up in your in your interval of likely values, your confidence interval? If no, you reject the null hypothesis. If yes, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? Now, just to let you know, again, with these, with these tests here, these p-value tests, you compare them to your alpha. So at the end of the day, right, if you're, if p-value is less than alpha, you reject the null. Otherwise, you would fail to reject. So that would be for both, both one and two tailed. So now there are errors, of course, in hypothesis tests. So think about it. If the null hypothesis happens to be true and you reject the null hypothesis, what happened? Well, you that's your type one error because you rejected a true null. But if the null hypothesis is true and you fail to reject the null, you're correct, aren't you? Right? Yay. All right, if the null is false, the null hypothesis is false, and you reject the null, right? That is also correct. And more than that, this happens to be the power of the test. Okay, the probability that this happens relates to, this relates to the power of the test. And then if the null is false and you fail to reject the null, then that's called type two error. So it turns out that power is equal to one minus beta, and beta is the probability of a type two error. So let's just write all that in. Alpha, does that sound familiar? Your alpha level, you set that um, as a researcher before you start because you don't wanna just fit, <laughs> you don't wanna just um, fit your findings, right, to a certain level. Um, that's not quite the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, so type one error is the probability that A, true null hypothesis is rejected. Okay. Now beta is the type 2 error, the probability that a false null hypothesis is not rejected. The power of a test is power equals one minus beta, the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis given 
the null hypothesis is false. All right, so that's just an overview of um, hypothesis tests. And if you want to see an example, feel free to tune in to the next section, 3.3. Have a wonderful morning, evening, or afternoon whenever you're watching this movie, and I'll talk to you soon.